Kia ora, church, and welcome to His Story, My Story. This is a series about ordinary people with extraordinary stories. And today, we've got a powerful testimony by Gavin D'Souza. So here is Gavin's story. Hi, my name is Gavin D'Souza, and this is my story. I suppose um, when I look back on my life so far, um, one, one experience really sticks out for me as being a reflection of God's work in my life. And uh, I suppose that um, was a desire for me to um, persevere and, and go to the Olympic Games. And um, I was an average student at school. I had very clever brothers. I had, uh, I've got four brothers. And um, I, I had a desire to be a, a physiotherapist. And I finished school, um, didn't get bursary, um, so, uh, but I still went to university. And I did um, a, a Bachelor of Science degree at university. And um, I then applied for physiotherapy school. Um, and my first failure was I, I didn't get um, I didn't get accepted into Auckland or Otago. They turned me down. I got an interview with a tiger, but I, but I subsequently got turned down. Um, I decided then to um, work for a year in a, in my local dairy company in Morrinsville, and I, I suppose uh, lifting 25 kilogram bags for eight hours seemed a, a real long way away from my uh, desire to be a physiotherapist. I worked for a year there, and applied again to physiotherapy school in both Otago and Auckland and this time I got accepted uh, to Auckland. Um, so I began my physiotherapy journey um, in Auckland. Uh, after the first year I had a second failure and I failed anatomy and as a result of that had to do a reset to go into the second year I was able to pass that research and go into the second year. Um, after that, I, I, when, when I finished my second year, at the end of that, I failed neurobiology and had to reset that. And unfortunately, I failed that and had to repeat the whole of second year. So now a three-year qualification has, has turned into a four-year qualification. Again, it seemed um, all these trials that were put in front of me, um, you know, were, were, I think, were God's way of just testing my perseverance, really. I finished the second year for the second time and went into the third year and finally um, finished the, the third year of physiotherapy and started working as a physiotherapist at the Waikato Hospital. I still had a dream to um, go to the Olympics because as a, as a family, um, we were sporting mad. We wished to watch the Olympics and Commonwealth Games on TV. Uh, we also we were a sports mad with football as well. So I had this, I had this underlying desire to go to an Olympic Games and maybe even do the All Whites. But I, I didn't really um, tell anyone that too loudly because I, I didn't have, uh, at that point, uh, confidence in, in, in how I would ever get there. Um, after working for a couple of years, I started doing local sports teams as a physiotherapist. And um, I worked uh, for club footballs for a, as a team physiotherapist for a, a number of years and finally got an opportunity to, to do the New Zealand under 16 football side and um, it, then that transpired I got an opportunity to do the under 20 football side. I finally um, uh, got an opportunity to, to do a, a, a junior World Cup with the New Zealand under 21 hockey team and uh, I went to the World Cup with them as a team physiotherapist. Um, 
finishing that, um, I, that led on to having an opportunity to do the New Zealand men's hockey team because um, they wanted me to be still involved with New Zealand men's hockey as a result of that under-21 experience. I got, I got a, a chance as a result of that. Um, I went with um, the uh, Commonwealth Games team as a general medical physiotherapist to the Commonwealth Games in Manchester 2002. Um, from that I continued carrying on with uh, the New Zealand men's hockey team and got opportunities to go with them for overseas tours. Um, in 2004 I went with the New Zealand uh, men's hockey team for their Olympic qualifying tournament for them to try and qualify for the Athens 2004 Olympic Games. Um, there was a, a, a little bit of a bittersweet moment there because I, I thought uh, even though I was going with them to the Olympic game qualifier, even if they qualify, I um, wasn't going to go with them if they qualified because I wasn't the main lead physiotherapist at that point with the, with the New Zealand men's hockey program. Uh, there was another person who was going to go if they had qualified. As it turns out, um, in, when, we, when I went to Madrid to, to qualify for that tournament, because I still wanted to go to the Olympic Games, and I thought if the hockey team qualified, I wasn't going to go. There was another way of trying to go to an Olympic Games, and that was with the general medical team. So I applied for the general medical team position and was lucky enough to get down to the last selection and got an interview. But unfortunately, I, I didn't get selected for that position. So now I was going to go to Madrid with the men's hockey team to try and qualify for the Athens Olympics. And it was, and and, and this is sort of my my sort of God moment, really, because I I I was sitting in in uh, my hotel room in Madrid and thinking about the opportunities lost. Uh, to go to the Olympic Games because both ways, both doors had, had closed. But I still believed I, I was going to go. But there was a there was a point in that in that Madrid hotel room that there was a real calm that came over me, and I believe it. This was the Holy Spirit, really. And I I thought, you know what? If if God wants me to go, He'll find a way. But I can accept. I can't go under my own means. I've tried all the ways possible, but now I've left up to God. And there was a there was a real presence of the Holy Spirit in that room. I look back on that now and, and see the Holy Spirit because there was a peace, and I, you know, uh, it's tra it transcends all understanding. Because I thought, well, why am I happy with my dream not being not being fulfilled here? But there was a real sense of peace. As it turns out, the, um, the, the, the hockey team qualified on that trip. They, we qualified to go to the Olympics. So there was a bittersweet moment there where I was happy for the team, but um, it was disappointing that I wasn't going to go with them to Athens. Some months later, when, when I'd returned back home after that trip, I got a, a, a phone call randomly from, from the lead physiotherapist and at work and he said, Gavin, how would you like to go to the Olympic Games? And, you know, I, I rang Marie straight away and she started crying on the phone and, and I, was, I, was, I was also really emotional as well. And, and really, you know, it, this, this to me is, is, is God's hand in my life. He, he knows the desires of your heart and he, 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 I think I came to a point where when I left it all up to God, he came through because I couldn't do it under my own means. And, and, and really, um, I, I can't imagine any other way of writing that script where at the 11th hour, I got to go to an Olympic Games. And, and you know, when there's no earthly solution, I had to rely on God. And, and really, God's solution and blessings were more amazing than I could ever imagine. And you know, as, as a result of that, I, I went to, to two more 
Olympic Games. I've, so I went to three Olympic Games, I went to three Commonwealth Games. I, I did 13 years of touring with the New Zealand men's hockey side. I visited 12 countries, went to, did 20 overseas trips, um, eight international matches with, with the All Whites, um, 134 international matches with the men's hockey team and you know God's blessing was amazingly more than I can ever imagine and after that that initial failures and you know of trying to get into physiotherapy of uh, having to take four years to do my qualification God really blessed me uh, in uh, in ways I could ever imagine and um, you know the, I suppose for me I mean, I've got a beautiful family. I've got Maria. I also met my wife at physio school. So that was another blessing. And, and really, if, if I'd gone the year before and got in initially, I probably wouldn't have had a chance to meet her. So Maria and I trained together at physiotherapy school. We've got six beautiful kids. So God's had a real massive hand in my life. And the things he's taught me is that he, know, he knows the desires of your heart. Um, in difficult times, it, it tests your faith, and, but it prepares you for God's blessing. God wants you to, to bless you, but he also tests you to, to, uh, to you know, refine your faith. And, and God's timing, what I found hard was God's timing and my timing, they, they didn't match up. And, but, but when he was ready, he opened the, the doors and so much more abundantly. And really, he wants you to rely on him too. Yes, you, you've got to do your part, but when I, I relied on him only when I couldn't do any more um, that I could do. And uh, to me, that, that sense of peace in that hotel room, I still, to this day, I just, I still go back to that, that hotel room. And I go, why did I feel so, so peaceful when, when, when I wasn't going to go? But I think that was really the Holy Spirit presence. And, and for me, God used my gifts that he had given me, and those were hard work and perseverance and, and, and never giving up. I've been part of Hamilton even for a number of years now, and, and I've been blessed um, by, um, by the church, but also been blessed by serving, because I think by serving you, you, you meet people, you hear people's stories, you share in your, in your difficulties, um, and at times when you're down, people people pray for you and 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 put you up, and and you can do the same thing for other people too. Um, but it's been a privilege to be able to serve, and um, I I, um, I I continue to want to serve for for those reasons as well. My name's Gavin De Souza, and that's been my story. Wow, what a powerful story. Gavin has been to three Olympic Games, three Commonwealth Games. That may not have happened if he had given up. Gavin's story is a story of perseverance. Gavin's story is a story of not quitting. I mean, what do you do when life throws a curveball at you? It's easy to take a step back. It's easy to quit. It's easy to give up. You've worked hard to get where you are and something unexpected has happened and it causes you to take a step back. Have you ever been to a place where Throwing in the towel seems to be the only option, like throwing in the towel in on your marriage, throwing the towel in on a friendship, a career, or your ministry, right? Have you ever felt like hope is gone? Like you're going through some trial right now and you feel like taking a step back or, 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 or giving up. Let me tell you, if you've ever been in that place or maybe you're in there right now, you are not alone. The disciples know exactly how you feel. They've been there before. You know, they had hung their hope on a cross and their hope died. And when their hope died, their faith died with them. They had no idea that Jesus was making a comeback. See, Jesus was crucified on a Friday and on Sunday, he resurrected to life. Early that morning, early on Resurrection Sunday, the women were going to the tomb with some spices. They were the original Spice Girls, right, right there in the Bible. And when they, when they get to the tomb, they find the tomb empty. So where did Jesus go? Where did he go? Well, one of the places we do know where Jesus went, he went to chase some friends down. And we find that story in Luke chapter 24, verse 13. And let's read. 
Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. Emmaus. About seven miles from Jerusalem. So they're heading to this place called Emmaus. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. Now Jesus had to chase down these two guys. He was pursuing them because they were heading in the wrong direction. Aren't you glad that God pursues you when you're heading in the wrong direction? Let's read verse 17. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. Their heart had been broken. They hung their hope on a cross and their hope died. They were returning home. They were returning home to what was familiar. They were, they were returning home with, because they have lost hope. I mean, isn't that what we do when we lose hope? We, we return to what is familiar. We return to what we used to do, right? We take a step back to our old ways. We take a step back to what is comfortable. We take a step back to what is easy. Verse 18. One of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that had happened there in these days? What things, he asked. What things? Now, Jesus isn't asking because he doesn't know what happened. He's asking because they're asking the wrong questions. And we ask the wrong questions all the time. Like, God, where were you? when my mom was sick. God, where were you when I needed you the most? God, where were you in my darkest time? Verse 19. What things, he asked. And then they began to tell Jesus what took place. Verse 22. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. Now, this amazes me hearing this because Jesus leading up to his death was telling his disciples, his followers, that he's going to die. But three days later, he's going to rise back to life again. Now, Jesus had told them this. Now, the day that Jesus rose, the woman said that his body had been risen. Now, wouldn't you stick around? Like, wait a minute, didn't Jesus tell us that he was going to rise back to life? Wouldn't you be a little bit curious? Like, wouldn't you just stick around at least till Monday to see what had happened? But no, they head off to Emmaus. Verse 25, he said to them, how foolish you are. How slow to believe all that the prophets, had, the prophets had spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Now we think entering glory is, is nice. We think entering his glory is like candy floss and unicorns. But you know what? Entering his glory looks more like, like failure. It looks more like resetting your exams. It looks more like a loss. It looks more like a setback. It looks like the cross. See, when I'm going through the hardest moments in my life, I want a Jesus who can speak to the storm and says, win, be silenced. But I fail to recognize the strength that my suffering produces. I thank God for my hardship. I thank God for my pain because it's made me who I am today. But I could never step into my glory without first going through my suffering. Because if you've had a setback, don't take a step back because you got to get ready for your comeback. Come on. And this is the application of Emmaus. Emmaus is a step back. Emmaus is where we go when we give up. Emmaus is what we return to, to what is familiar, to where we feel safe. It's the place we go when we quit. Because to quit, it's easy. It's easier to walk away. It's easier to walk, to give up on our marriage. It's easier to give up on a relationship, a ministry, a career. It's easier to give up on a dream. This is what a setback looks like. What does your setback look like? What does your Emmaus look like? What do you return to? What are you discussing with, with yourself on the way to your Emmaus? Oh man, I failed and I failed here and I failed again. Why don't I just give up? Let me tell you something. You will never reach your breakthrough if you return to Emmaus. You'll never reach your breakthrough if you stay at Emmaus. Verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and he began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. 
See, in their brokenness, in their sorrow, when they thought their hope was lost, their turning point is when they realized that Jesus was with them all along. And I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. Your, your turning point is when you realize that Jesus was with you all along. We don't see him while we're, when we're in it, but after the fact, when we're looking back, we see that God was with us. I thank God for my hardships. I thank God for my pain. Your breakthrough is coming if you don't give up. I love Gavin's story and I love what he said because initially when he wasn't offered the job, he really wanted to go and the door was closed. And this is what he said. He said, if God really wants me to go, then he will make a way. And there in his ho hotel room in Madrid, he felt the tangible presence of God and this peace came upon him that transcends all understanding, right? And, 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 he, and he knew God was with him and the rest is history. And, he's, and that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. It says, And the peace of God will transcends all, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, your turning point is when you realize that Jesus is with you all along. You don't see it at, the, at, that, at that moment, but when you look back, you can see He was with you all along. And that's the story of Gavin. And that can be your story, because His story is my story. If you've had a setback, don't take a step back because get ready for your comeback. And that's Gavin's story. And church, be blessed. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Ka kite.